Okay, so uh, welcome to today's lesson. Today I'm going to look at a condition from the endocrine system, which is thyrotoxicosis. So some of you may have may know thyrotoxicosis as hyperthyroidism. So it's one and the same condition. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. So how can we define thyrotoxicosis? So thyrotoxicosis, this is an endocrine uh, system condition resulting in excess uh, free, uh, free thyro thyroxine and free triodothyronine, characterized by increased metabolic rate uh, and other symptoms that may be experienced by the patient, such as heart palpitations, nervousness, or insomnia. So when it comes to thyrotoxicosis, there is increase in the metabolic rate. And what causes this increase in metabolic rate is because of the increased thyroxine levels and the triodothyronine. So these two uh, biomolecules, they, uh, they increase or they help in the metabolic rate or metabolic processes in the body. So when they are in excess, meaning, meaning the metabolic state of someone or the rate at which something is being broken down in the body is going to be increased as well. As a result, this patient is going to have um, uh, symptoms such as heart palpitation because the heart is receiving faster signals because of increased uh, metabolic rate in the body. Apart from that, there is nervousness, and nervousness is because uh, it is due to stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is also hyperactive because uh, there is the increased activities in the body. So as a result, it is also active or uh, working at a faster pace. Apart from that, there is insomnia. Insomnia is just due to increased uh, metabolic rate in the body. Someone cannot sleep when the body is working at full capacity. So they have many difficulties to sleep or in sleeping patients who have uh, hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. So basically, that's how you can define uh, hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. Then when it comes to some of the causes or predisposing factors of uh, thyrotoxicosis, we have conditions such as Graves disease. So in Graves disease, this is uh, an autoimmune uh, disorder or disease. And in Graves disease, there is increased metabolic rate because of someone having this, uh, this disease in their body. So the metabolic rate is increased and as a result it also uh, causes hyperactivity of the thyroid gland causing thyrotoxicosis. So the Graves disease sometimes it is also called a toxic goiter to patients who have toxic goiters meaning they have Graves disease. Apart from that we have uh, toxic nodule or toxic uh, mouth nodular goiters those can cause thyrotoxicosis and also toxic adenomas. So cancers uh, may also cause an increase in the metabolic rate, which may cause thyrotoxicosis. And as well as infections, such as uh, those causing thyroiditis or inflammation of the thyroid gland, they may cause thyrotoxicosis. Thyroid cancer, cancer of the thyroid gland, it enlarges. Those can also cause uh, thyrotoxicosis. And apart from that, as well as exogenous um, uh, use of uh, hormone replacement or thyroid hormone replacement, we have people, especially those who lift weights, they mostly rely on exogenous thyroid gland or thyroid hormone so that uh, the muscles, they don't shrink whenever they are not lifting weights. But because of uh, excessive use of um, uh, thyroid replacement hormones, this may cause an excess hormone level in the body causing thyrotoxicosis. Then apart from that, other cancers such as thyroid stimulating hormone secreting pituitary adenoma can also cause thyrotoxicosis. So basically those are some of the conditions which may predispose or exactly cause thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism in a patient. So we can move on to look at the disease progression of the pathophysiology of thyrotoxicosis. So when it comes to understanding a medical condition, pathophysiology has become very important because this can help you, give you, uh, can help um, give you a clear picture of how a condition occurs and how it progresses in somebody's uh, body. So when it comes to the pathophysiology, you realize when, that when there is excessive uh, thyroid hormone secretion, this leads to hyperthyroidism. 
and this is what we are calling thyrotoxicosis. So the thyroid gland or the thyroid hormone increases the metabolic rate in all the body organs. Apart from that, it also increases the sympathetic uh, nervous system activities causing fine tremor and low heat tolerance. So because there's increased thyroid hormone, uh, the thyroid hormone can also directly stimulate the heart, increasing the heart rate and also the cardiac output and the blood flow. So due to the elevated levels of thyroid hormone, uh, uh, nutrients such as proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, they are increasing their metabolic rate. For example, protein synthesis and breakdown is going to be increased. However, the breakdown exceeds the build-up, causing a net protein known as a negative nitrogen balance. So up to that point, what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to path, uh, uh, pathophysiology of uh, hyperthyroidism, the first thing that is affected that we have mentioned is proteins. So the breakdown and also the build-up of proteins are going to be affected. However, in hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis, the breakdown of protein is exceeded as compared to the build-up. Meaning if someone is not taking in enough proteins, they are going to have a net uh, protein, which we call a negative nitrogen balance, meaning someone has reduced protein levels in the body. So glucose is also increased and the patient end, ends up with uh, hyperglycemia because uh, hyper, uh, yeah, hyperglycemia because of increased breakdown of uh, carbohydrates in the body. Uh, furthermore, fat metabolism is increased and the body fat decreases. As a result, the patient loses weight. And although the client in, uh, in hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis have increased appetite, the food intake does not meet the energy demands and the client loses weight with prolonged hyperthyroidism and the patient has uh, a chronic nutritional deficiency. So the high thyroid hormone uh, affects the production of uh, stimulating hormones from the anterior pituitary gland as well as the hypothalamus. And in, in addition, thyroid hormone influences the sex hormone production in both men and women. As a result, in women, they have menstrual problems and also decreased in fertility levels. Then um, in both men and women, there's increased uh, libido to patients who have uh, hyperthyroidism. So when it comes to uh, the pathophysiology or the disease progression of uh, thyrotoxicosis, basically those are the things uh, that are involved. So you see someone having increased metabolic rate, breakdown of certain nutrients are increased, and there is a net uh, uh, balance between the build-up and the breaking down of certain nutrients. As a result, someone goes into nutritional deficiency. And and the patient also experiences a drastic loss of weight. But uh, thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism patients, these patients, they have good appetite. So when you start seeing yourself eating too much than you usually do, you should check yourself. It could be that you have a lot of thyroid hormone in your body. That's why you are eating too much as uh, uh, more than before. It is not that you, you are enjoying life. It, is, it could be that you have a problem. So when it comes to the signs and symptoms of um, hyperthyroidism, we can talk of uh, palpitations. In my, definitions, in my definition, I talked of uh, heart palpitations. So heart palpitation is due to an increase in, in, the, in the heart rate, and this is due to increased uh, metabolic rate in the body. Then there's also heat intolerance due to increased uh, metabolic rate causing fever. And then apart from that, there is nervousness. Nervousness is due to stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. And insomnia is basically due to increased metabolic rate. Apart from that, the patient may experience um, a breathlessness. So breath, breathlessness with or without exertion. This one is mainly due to increased metabolic rate and also uh, resulting in an increase uh, in resulting in increased oxygen demand by the body because of the increased metabolic rate. Then there's also increased bowel movements. So someone may frequently be needing to go to the toilet to pass bowel or 
uh, because of increased peristaltic movements because the sympathetic nervous system are constantly being activated by the body because of the increased metabolic rate of breaking down of food substances meaning also peristaltic movements are increased in the GIT. Apart from that there is also um, light or absent menstrual periods and this is due to influence of the thyroid hormone on sex hormones and the patient also feels fatigue or getting tired easily because of the increased metabolic rate depleting easily the energy um, uh, storage in the body then uh, apart from that there's uh, trembling trembling hands this is due to stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system weight loss is due to impaired metabolism of carbohydrates fats and proteins there's also muscle weakness due to hypoxia or reduced oxygen supply to the body tissue. Apart from that, there is um, hair loss. Hair loss is due to impaired protein metabolism. This is because you need proteins for hair to, to grow in the body and also to be produced by the body. So when it comes to uh, clinical manifestations or symptoms, those are some of the symptoms that we can talk of in hyperthyroidism. So when it comes to diagnosis or management of, uh, of uh, hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis, basically this is a two-way thing. A patient can be indicated for thyroidectomy or for surgery where the thyroid gland, either partially or complete removal of this gland is, uh, is made, or some patients may be put on certain drugs to try and control the, the growth of the thyroid gland or the rate at which the metabolic rate are being carried out in the body. So when it comes to clinical or diagnosis of uh, hyperthyroidism, you of course start with history taking. The patient maybe may present with um, history of heart palpitation and also uh, nervousness or insomnia or even maybe presenting with uh, symptoms such as um, uh, drastic weight loss. So those are some of the history taking points that the patient may present may present with, and maybe uh, during a physical examination, uh, the patient, of course, during physical examination as well, the patient may present with the one of the symptoms as well. It could be maybe if you didn't put uh, uh, weight loss on history taking as you do your physical examination, the patient may present with the weight loss. But if you use weight loss on history taking uh, during your physical examination, as you do auscultation, the patient may present with uh, a racing heart or heart palpitation. Uh, apart from that, the patient may also present with um, muscle weakness. So those are some of the physical examination points that you may put. Or apart from that, the patient may present with an enlarged thyroid gland. So apart from that, you can then do other investigations such as measuring the level of thyroid stimulating hormone in the blood. And this is uh, usually low. So when you measure the, the level of thyroid hormone, so you are going to get blood and blood, you are going to take it for measuring levels of thyroid stimulating hormone, which is going to come out low. And this is because of the inhibition of the high thyroid hormone present in the body. Then you can also get blood for free T3 and T4, which is going to be elevated. So T3 is the thyroxine and T4 is triodothyronine. So you get blood to check for free T3 and T4, and this is going to be elevated. Apart from that, you can do... Okay. So apart from that, you can... Um, you can check, uh, you can get blood, you can do a radioactive iodine uptake test. So in a radioactive iodine uh, uptake test, this is going to be increased and may indicate hypersecretion of the thyroid gland. You can also do an ultrasound scan of the thyroid gland, which may show an enlarged gland. When it comes to treatment of um, of uh, hyperthyroidism, you can give uh, uh, thyrostatic drugs such as cabimazole. You can give uh, 20 to 60 milligrams uh, once a day for about two to eight weeks. You can also give methimazole 10 to 60 milligrams once a day 
in uh, divided doses. You can also give uh, uh, propyuracil, uh, 300 to 450 milligrams in uh, three divided doses in a single day, meaning three times a day. So you can give those drugs in trying to control the rate at which um, uh, the thyroid gland is carrying out its metabolic processes. Apart from that, you can give beta blockers. So beta blockers um, uh, such as uh, propranolol, uh, 40 milligrams three times a day, are also metoprololol, uh, 50 milligrams uh, QID. So you only give beta blockers to patients who are experiencing symptoms such as heart palpitations, trembling, anxiety, and other um, uh, symptoms relating to heart uh, uh, problem. But like I mentioned, uh, treatment for, uh, uh, for thyrotoxicosis also involves thyroidectomy where the whole thyroid gland or part of it can be removed. When it comes to management of this patient in the hospital, you can just do many general nursing management because there's nothing much special that you can do to such patients. But as you're managing this patient, talk about the nutrition which you need to observe and correctly replace it. Talk about nursing the patient in a cool environment because mostly they are uh, heat into they have heat intolerance because of excess um, metabolism of food content. So when it comes to nursing management, it will just be mainly general nursing management. But in terms of medical management, you can give those drugs. And in terms of uh, surgical management, the patient can be indicated for thyroidectomy. And if you are preparing a patient for thyroidectomy, this is going to be an elective surgery because this is not an emergence condition. So basically, this is where we'll end with the thyrotoxicosis. Thank you so much for taking time to go through today's lesson.